are frequently with, which are considered as incorporation in Chukchi, and then discuss some cases. So we are going to see some Chukchi structures which are similar uh, to what is uh, often studied as incorporation in other languages in some typologies with own construction as well, constructions as well as some Chukchi particularities. So yeah, let's and I want to do it like uh, uh, interactively. So I will ask you some questions, and I hope you will be in the right mood to answer them. Okay. So okay, the first part, a brief overview, of different constructions. Here you see the two clauses. Uh, can someone maybe who attended the first class? Uh, answer why we know that the B clause contains a compound verbal word where the, the nominal root is compounded with the verbal root. And so what what's the difference? Yeah, the question is why we know that Vasha isn't a separate word there. What, what, yeah, uh, in the set one, yeah, uh, a group, uh, yeah, it's the right answer, it's vowels, but in addition to vowels, we see that the case pattern changes. So we have a church transitive clause in A, where it's an ergative case, actually two, like an ergative which is a, uh, a participant and a negative case which is uh, an instrumental and we have an, uh, yeah, and we have a so-called direct object which form is different in the solutive uh, than the form of uh, this word when it's incorporated than in oblique cases so we have uh, we have um, morphological like the alternation, the, like the phonological uh, uh, vowel harmony alternations, constant alternations, as well as syntactic alternations, such as the change of agreement markers. Yeah, you see that in A you have transitive agreement and in B you have intransitive agreement. So it's quite, mm, quite easy to catch the noun version of the Okay, yeah, and the, 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 uh, the patterns, the patterns of incorporation in different languages are different. For example, we sometimes find languages where the uh, indexation of incorporated nominal is still present. In Chukchi, the case is different. So if we yeah, look here, we see, as I already told, it's transitive, it's intransitive, and so on. So we need to remember then According to case marking and agreement, Chukchi incorporated noun is not so, let's say, syntactic leg. Yeah, and for further discussion, it's what we mentioned. Yeah, Chukchi noun incorporation is quite, at least, the part, the, the subtype, the, the most common subtype, which we are now discussing, the incorporation of key, key participants, is quite productive. So, in two, it's an example from the text where yeah, probably the speakers of Russian can recognize this word. It's actually what Sapok, which is borrowed by Chukchi, and even the borrowed, borrowed words are easily incorporated. Yeah, and so with this pattern, when the former direct object, the P participant, is incorporated, uh, we don't find apparently some exceptions. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, a, part, a pattern close to this, and we, we should discuss in, in more detail in the last part of the lecture, is the integration of the single inactive participant. As Paulina told you yesterday, uh, like the most general pattern that the more volitional, the more active the, particip the participant in the situation is, the less likely we can incorporate him. So yeah, the difference between three and four is that to be ill you don't need 
and evolution actually, but to walk, you need this arm. Maybe. Okay, that was an overview of the most well-known pattern of teaching preparation. There are many more patterns, some of which will discuss, some of which will not, which are uh, less known, less productive, and less well studied. So, yeah, again, we see this. Uh, this sentence, the, this cloth where the boy is sharpening, where the boy sharpened the knife. Uh, but here, we have already seen that the people, like the most people, like the participant, the knife which is sharpened, is incorporated. Here, uh, actually, we find that an instrument, sometimes some instruments can be incorporated. So, the word stone, which when it's not incorporated, appears in objective case can be compounded with a bird stem. It's not, it's not regular, it's less productive as we see in 6 and now this instrumental function is not integrated. Yeah, and can anyone uh, probably yeah, maybe say what's the difference in the pattern of this instrument tangent incorporation from the pattern of P-like direct object incorporation? So, thus Syntax in five it is syntax in five affected by the integration of an instrumental noun. Yeah, it is? Uh, actually not because the object agreement is preserved. And I have mm -hmm. one question. Can I ask them? Yeah. yeah. Uh, is the effect of uh unfelicity unfelicity uh, in this uh, relate to the absence of an overtly marked uh, a work expressed uh, subject. Yeah. Uh, I doubt it because, like many teacher sentences, uh, when the subject is phenomenal, uh, do not contain it. Yeah. And so, mm, as for word order, for someone who has not attended the previous lectures, the word order and uh, <coughs> the uh, issues which regulate the appearance of full and key arguments in Chukchi. They are not well understood, but uh, in general they don't find uh, the cases when they directly affect the uh, such grammatical structures. So, yes, yeah, sometimes the difference between examples will be in that something is present, something is not, something is omitted, uh, or present only as an index, but just, uh, yeah, it's, it, that has not a very severe effect. Okay, so. Maybe, maybe you should use the microphone. Yeah, it's hard to hear me. Not really. Well, maybe for the Jakarta sake. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, and how to switch it on? Can anyone help There me? is just a button. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, okay. <coughs> yeah, I will try. Sorry if it's too loud. Um, yeah, uh, some, there are many different patterns of uh, incorporation of oblique participants in intransitive verbs. Uh, we'll discuss today only the incorporation of, uh, in some detail, we'll, we'll discuss only the incorporation of path participants in the motion verbs. There are some motion verbs in Chukchi uh, which allow the incorporation of either source or goal. And the important thing for us is that they, they are not uh, that some uh, sets of verbs, some groups of verbs, prefer uh, either goal or either source arguments for the incorporation. So the verbs which are similar to which, like are translated in Russian to go, depart, uh, leave, and something else, yeah, and some else, they incorporate the goal participant. And the verbs which denote the arrival at the scene or the arrival at some point, the final part of the uh, motion event, they prefer to incorporate the source participants. Yeah. Uh, and we see it by the uh, dash, oh, so the dashes in, in the third session. Okay. Yeah, not only nouns can incorporate in Chukche, but there are some structures which are called verb incorporation. Actually, they are quite different. Today we'll discuss only two. Uh, two constructions uh, where two verbs are compounded. The first one is when the uh, 
translational motion verb can be combined with another verb which denotes either yen can someone on the basis of the previous slide uh, yeah yeah it's quite sure yeah, it's quite clear so the same sets of verbs the sets of departure like verbs incorporates the purpose situation like in example nine where yeah it's uh, go away to, to take part in the reindeer race but not uh, like leave the reindeer race and the similar uh, is the behavior of uh, so-called come or arrive verbs which tend to incorporate the uh, the situation was the which was prior to the motion event so they often present this come back from like the night watch come back from the uh, Reindeer race, something like that. Yeah. Uh, not only nouns and verbs can be interpreted, but also adverbal expressions. Uh, most of them are uh, many adverbs, some, as, uh, some adverbs, some aspect, uh, adverbs with a spectral, mean, a spectral meaning. Uh, so we see in 11, yeah, it's again, <laughs> yeah. It's, how do we know that the adverb is incorporated? Uh, yeah, uh, I think it will be, will be clear on the next slide. So some adverbs in Chukchi they have inflection. This adverb uh, inflects with instrumental case. Uh, some adverbs have uh, some are, are, infle are, are, are inflected, but you have uh, the circumfixes in Chukchi, so it helps. Yeah. Well, uh, it's probably a bit, a bit of methodological, methodological question regarding the first question. Uh, well, how do you know that adverbs are incorporated as opposed to being what? As opposed to being an independent word in the sentence. Well, what are the criteria? Uh, Generally, we can say that uh, in Russian is also an adverb in preparation unless we see some patterns which say that it is uh, or it isn't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, some adverbs actually cannot. The only like uh, a rigid class which seems to avoid incorporation is then some adverbs which uh, for the interpretation is something like a deactive context, something like now or uh, the maybe it's due to the fact that this spectral no this uh, time spectral notions are expressed in Chukchi by other morphemes. Maybe the pattern, the reason is different, we just don't know but like uh, Oh, sorry, there is no translation line. Yeah, it's supposed to be now. He, he's uh, sharpening the knives now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, so what happens when we have a construction where both the adverb and uh, now can be incorporated? Uh, it seems that at least the adverbs and at least in compounds I've studied, uh, the order is as follows. The nominal needs to be closer to the verbal root than an adverb. Yeah, you see it in 13. So it's not, it's unfelicitous. It's, it's wrong to say uh, 14, like to, to have the knife uh, separated from the verb sharpened by the adverb. Okay. Yeah, and uh, as uh, 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 as opposed to now to now incorporation, actually uh, more than one adverb can be uh, compounded with a verb stem. So then, I I am not sure what are the limits because it uh, it's highly um, tied with uh, it's highly tied with the. Things like uh, the op operative memory and so on, but at least like uh, at least two adverbs 
uh, can be combined in one single word. Uh, yeah, and at least some of, of the speakers, they can actually uh, explain some kind of difference between the different orders. And yeah, the difference is, is quite uh, natural. So the order uh, determines the scope of two different titles. So uh, in the first case, uh, we don't know whether he, uh, whether the first time the boy sharpened the knife uh, was when the, the boy sharpened the knife for the first time, was the boy uh, like uh, pleasure to do it, or, or, was he happy to do it or not? Uh, and so it can be translated, it can be used in a situation like that. But in 16, uh, it actually should mean that. Uh, even for the first time, the boy did it with a great pleasure. That's it. Yeah, and when we discussed uh, adverb incorporation, we are ready to get back to the second subtype of incorporation. Yeah, it's uh, now look at the examples, I think, uh, C and A. First, it's example C, sorry for uh, yeah, stupid order. Uh, yeah, in example C, uh, we see that the main adverb can be combined with the translation motion adverb. Or the main verb can be combined with the translation motion verb. Yeah, it can be quite common for verb serialization for linguistically. Uh, and we see this the same, the similar ordering constraints. So we see that something with more adverbal, with more adverbal impact to the whole semantics comes more on the left and yeah okay okay yeah and now uh, it was just an outline of some patterns which are found in Chukchi so uh, much more needs to be said about other patterns and about this one but we will turn to the more discussed issues in Chukchi non incorporation the incorporation of uh, the V-like participant and the incorporation of a single participant of the verb. Yeah, and if you ask, have some questions or you don't understand the, what's happening, yeah, you are free to ask. Okay, okay. So let's first discuss the modification possibilities of the incorporated noun. Uh, there is a some kind of typology of noun incorporation, uh, yeah, provided uh, by Samuel Block of Nithun, uh, where uh, she observed that in many languages the uh, incorporated noun cannot be modified, cannot uh, be modified the same way as an unincorporated. So, uh, a Chukchi is such a language. We, mm, if someone here uh, was present on the first lecture, you know that uh, Chukchi nominals can be modified by uh, something similar to adjectives with nicking form as in 19, yeah, uh, and uh, by demonstrative and so on. When the noun is, is incorporated, it's not possible to have a uh, uh, modifier stranded. So, yeah, so the numerals, the uh, adjective, the, this nicking form, this uh, quality, qualitative adjectives, the demonstratives, they can't uh, narrow the reference of the nominal. Yeah, and it's quite common. Mm -hmm. uh, what is not so common? That uh, Chukchi. Yeah, and uh, now I'll ask a question for someone who was on the first lecture. Can someone explain why 22 and 10, 23 is not possible and 21 is fine? Or maybe you can guess. Yes, it's the Well, Probably you can't uh, incorporate demonstratives or numerals into the noun. 
complex. That's close, but not. Yeah, that's close. Further. Maybe it depends on the referential stages of what the work that we need to be For example, mm. your knife doesn't mean that it's some special knife, and on the other hand, free and this uh, specialized the interpretation to be specific. That's actually a good guess, and that's more like an explanation. Indeed, in text we found uh, that most incorporated nouns are, uh, like, let's say, unmarked in terms of referentiality, and more, more often they're non referential, non -referential they don't appear in discourse before and, uh, and later, but in discourse. Uh, but actually, sometimes they can be refer referential, at least when you elicit. But yeah, the answer is most close to what Stepan, uh, Stepan, <laughs> Stepan uh, provided. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it's actually demonstratives and numerals can be can be compounded with a nominal stem, and it's uh, as Alexey Kozlov described, and it's uh, a, a, when the case of the nominal is oblique. But in absolutive, they do not combine. With the that they do not com compound with the nominal head, and we find very similar pattern in different construction noun incorporation. So, like the most general rule of what can modify as a dependent member of a com of what can modify an incorporated nominal as its dependent member of its compound is that what can appear compounded in absolutive appears. Can appear compounded in non cooperation construction. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, then this illustrates the, another part and apart from adjectives, we have uh, yeah, we have compounds, we have noun roots modified by noun roots, yeah, and it can actually give uh, quite felicitous and uh, as However, a long word, like in 25, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, in general, uh, when you ask speakers what, when you ask them to translate something or, and then ask what, what does it mean, uh, they tend to, uh, to, to give such an uh, such, trans such translations uh, which point in the direction that the number of uh, incorporated noun is kind of unmarked. So it depends on, on sometimes it depends on the context, sometimes it depends on the general world, world knowledge uh, and so on. So like in general the example 26 would be translated as uh, she fed the uh, dogs or she fed the dogs. Uh, but like, if you ask, can you say uh, like this uh, about you has only one dog, Strelka, for example? Uh, they, s they say that yeah, that's the exact way uh, you describe such situation. So the in general nominals are unmarked for number, and it's very common in similar constructions across languages as well as uh, uh, less. Close, less morphologically close, less closely morphologically close to new constructions like pseudonym preparation. But uh, Chukchi has some Chukchi language has some means to uh, mark the plurality of the incorporated noun. So the like the most uh, first of all you can uh, incorporate. You can incorporate into the noun the adjectival, uh, the, some, the root which behaves close to these quality roots, such as numerous. It's not exa exact plurality, so it's actually more than two. Yeah, further? Maybe it's a stupid question, but could it be uh, just a verbal plurality, not a number? Mm, uh, as I know, uh, this uh, root does not appear uh, with the, as the member of a verbal headed compound. I mean that when you have no noun, you can just, oh sorry, the translation is 
super brown, it's actually eat and positive feed. So two dogs, it's something, yeah. So back to the question, uh, this uh, root milk, I think, maybe you know more, more than me, but I think it can be combined that the dependent member on of a nominal compound, but not of a verbal. So you don't have structures like uh, like mukip uh, uh, which will mean like um, the many ones came. So I doubt that it's a uh, verbal modifier when, because it appears in such constructions only when the incorporated noun is present. Okay. Okay. Mm. A more uh, peculiar way to to mark the verbal uh, to mark the incorporated nominal plurality. Uh, yeah, it's by this suffix, and it needs a preliminary discussion. So, Chukchu has some uh, some verbal affixes which mark verbal plurality. The exact semantics of this uh, is something more than multiple S's. It also uh, describes an uh, intense situation, something like that. Uh, but for our purposes, let's think that it's. Uh, but it always presupposed plurality, which we see by example 13. So you can't you can't have a, a verbal word with such an affix uh, when no participant of situation is plural. Yeah, and but what happened? Can someone uh, describe what example 31 shows to us? What's the difference between 30 and 31? It's not an interpolation. <laughs> yeah, you are right. But uh, we have this verbal plurality suffix. What is plural here? And what is plural in 30? Uh, what is plural in, 30, in 29 and can and non plural in 30? To be more precise. Yeah, so uh, we remember that this plurational affix cannot combine, uh, c c cannot combine with a clause which subject is single, like in 30. When you have only one sledge, uh, it's, a, it's impossible to use this construction with Roku. But actually it's possible to have a singular subject, he, in 31, when the incorporated, the incorporated single participant is plural. Yeah, and uh, I would say it's indeed in, in when no nothing else points to another interpretation, it's indeed unmarked. So uh, when there is no r u or o in this case in in the word, uh, just the word o or vesimat uh, uh, is uh, it's po po polysemous. It can mean either that. Uh, some some of his sledges broke, or only one of his sledge, only one sledge uh, which belongs to him broke. But when we have this suffix, the interpretation is strictly plural, and it's possible in this case. So this affix can signal either the plurality of the, like let's say, syntactic subject, and the plurality of an let's say, incorporated subject. Yeah? Could it combine with uh, nouns which, uh, uh, even in the single uh, 
usage could uh, describe some kind of uh, entities which are plural by itself? Mm. That, that's an interesting question. I, I would say that I do not know if, uh, because the decision in Chukche, uh, it was like started only this year, the, what, what uh, how like mass nouns behave, how, uh, yeah, something like that. So I'm, we are not yet ready to, to I, at least I'm not yet ready to answer the question, but yeah, I think it's, it's an interesting point. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but we should remember that uh, all these cases we make with uh, verbal prolectional suffixes, it's they don't strictly mark the uh, plurality of incorporated noun. They always add some additional semantics to the event itself. So it's not just uh, now uh, the markers of the plural markers on incorporated noun. Yeah, and now we'll turn to another issue. We'll discuss uh, how noun incorporation constructions correspond to the, let's say, analytical quasi -syn synonyms. Yeah, uh, like the in many languages where noun incorporation is studied, one of the most frequently asked questions is how can we is can we actually predict uh, the possibility of incorporation when we look at uh, non incorporating construction like yeah throughout this presentation it's called analytic so uh, can we simply say that some pattern verbs of in syntax or in semantic in semantics of another construction can predict the possibility of incorporation let's look at it so uh, for church and for other languages, uh, like the more general pattern and the most observed pattern, pattern is that uh, intransitive clauses, what tends to be incorporated, is the uh, direct object. The tests are different, the languages are different, but people tend to say this. And for church, it, it was also shown that mm, in general, the direct objects which are marked with absolute, which are indexed with the uh, indexing markers are freely incorporatable. Yeah. Uh, and we, yeah, we see a transitive clause like 32 from a text where people put, people do something on sledges, it's a P like participant, it's in a neat clause, it would be a direct object, and it's freely. Yeah, it can be incorporated. Uh, yeah, constructed. Yeah, so we also have constructed examples like with verb takeout. So if we have two, uh, if if you have two objects, one of them is direct and another is obliquely marked. In this case, with ablative. So the uh, the source is marked with ablative here, and. Uh, yeah, what is incorporated in general would be, if you compare analytic and, co and compound construction, would be the uh, direct object mostly like participant and so on. Yeah, and this is what they mean to uh, put sledges in a row. So on the background you see the sledges which are put into a portal. Yeah. However, uh, let's look and yeah, let's pay attention to these examples. So we have a tentative sen yeah tentative clause like 34a, uh, where we have a P-like participant, the dog, which a bad bad boy uh, is beaten, is hitting hard, and the same like. This meaning can be expressed also by incorporation. Uh, what? Mm, why is 35, if you look at 35, why it's problematic? 
uh, to our more general idea that the direct object is incorporated. Yeah, yeah, so uh, if we say that it's the same group, we would have a, some kind of problem. So the place where you hit someone in Chukchi it can not be expressed. But however we see that we can't we can't incorporate a dog which is hidden when a part of it is present as a uh, separate number. Moreover, what we can incorporate here in this uh, part of a dog, its body part. Uh, yeah, sorry for the green. It, yeah, here it's not very visible. Okay, but in B we have how to have where the head is incorporated and the di and our direct object stay the same. So. In some constructions, which what apparently looks like a direct object cannot be incorporated. Yeah, and actually we see that in Chukchi, for these kinds of predicates, for contact predicates, for uh, hidden predicates, like in B, we see that uh, it's not possible to express a, a whole and a part as a uh, nominal phrase, like in B. So it would mean something like he hit a head which is separated from the dog or something like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we have... Yeah, also. Yeah. yeah, that's a good question. I haven't... Yeah, I, I didn't discuss it. In general, with, uh, with the incorporation of P-like participants of nominals, you don't have uh, that any a case, the cases of double incorporation. Yes, we have seen the double incorporation can occur when we have an instrumental agent and uh, a P-like participant, but it seems more as two different constructions. So, in these cases, we cannot say it in a single word. And yeah, and in case of like give verbs, we can uh, say in a single word the uh, theme and the recipient. Yeah, so yeah, I think that's important. Yeah, and if you have similar text examples with this body part incorporation, it's not as frequent as in some languages, but quite frequent. Yeah, and this is another hit verb. So, uh, according to my knowledge, all the hit verbs they behave in this case similarly. Yeah, and uh, what do we find with verbs which mean something like feel? Uh, yeah, uh, if you have an analytic construction. Uh, the one of the patterns in Chukchi is to say is to express a theme as an instrumental uh, oblique object and the uh, yeah the location the container the thing what is filled as a direct object as in 38a yeah so ice can is a yeah ice means glass in Chukchi uh, so it's a glass jar which uh, this all uh, fills with the cloud berries. The cloud berries is this. Uh, yeah. And what we find here is that we have two possibilities. Either we can incorporate, a, let's say, look, uh, yeah, a, a a theme what is uh, what is moved, or either we can we can incorporate a container what is filled. Yeah, like in B and C. Okay. 
So the brief summary of this um, subsection. So we, we see that actually the most straightforward, like this, the most straightforward rule, do do not uh, can can be applied directly. So we need to study different workplaces to study their syntax, to study their semantics, and then make the generalizations. And uh, another, uh, I think, summary which is actually not present here is that uh, all these cases do, do not seem to differ. So uh, we have the difference in sub surface syntax in case, in case marking, in uh, indexing. But uh, actually, if we uh, think about some something like transitivity and so on, we would not be too surprised that here two possible uh, that here two there are two, pos two different incorporation constructions which are both possible so what is like more P-like participant in with field work is a tricky question and if you expect some verbs to incorporate either one uh, either one participant or another we would actually expect that Phil will do this, but something like take out probably is less like is less likely to do it. Yeah, it was before. I think. Okay. Well, let's move on. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, with another verb, with uh, a lowered verb, it seems to be the differences, uh, difference similar to English, uh, uh, yeah, lowered intonation, where like you lowered this, this yeah, you, you lowered the sledges with something, or you lowered something onto the sledges, so uh, the yeah, and the, the construction, at least the construction where what is filled or loaded is incorporated, and uh, the construction and the container is in an absolutive. The intuition of some speakers is that uh, in perfect or in ours, this construction would mean that the container is actually filled. Uh, but other speakers do not have such a clear difference between the two constructions. So I yeah, throughout the whole presentation I would not speak much about the pragmatics and yeah about the pragmatic difference because actually we, we need a bigger focus to study it, we need a, we, yeah we need and we need some yeah we need it's a, a bit a separate issue. But I, I think yeah you're right it definitely plays some role. Yeah? Thank you. Uh, I think the intuition is right, and I have the same intuition. I wouldn't say. I would say definitely uh, the thing we observe with heat and contact verbs definitely uh, has something in common with this body part, with the patterns which we find in body part constructions throughout the world and in other body part incorporation constructions. So it's quite like expected that we cannot. Uh, that we prefer to incorporate the part and not the whole. But I wouldn't state it in terms of semantic hierarchies. Because uh, it seems that uh, for this hierarchy, the only motivation would be that we find such, uh, such sentences and it would be like circular. I would, I would prefer to think more about the 
uh, event semantics of these patterns, mm -hmm. which may be, which actually may be different of what's the dynamics of these situations, which are in some terms, but it's another issue I wouldn't discuss it in detail here, can be different for these constructions. Yeah? Any more questions? Okay, let's m move on. Oi, what have I done? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, another issue which uh, is frequently discussed is the mm, yeah, in Chukchi, uh, when, some, when the direct object is, the former direct object, the P participant is incorporated, another participant can, can get his, uh, this absurdity of, uh, case, this, his syntactic, his syntactic role. Yeah, uh, so we, yeah, here's a text example, it's not very, uh, yeah, maybe we should return to him after to this afterwards. Mm. No, we'll discuss now. <laughs> so uh, in general, the, this uh, verb, uh, which was this transitive Hank verbalizer, it's a causative from Hank. It's to Hank something. The general root is intransitive in Chukchi. And when there is no incorporation, the thing which is Hank is its direct object. Here, however. Can anyone say what is a direct object in this clause? A former direct object? Or and, and you, uh, a syntactic direct object which we find here. Uh, stone. A stone is an incorporated direct object. No. A new direct object, I think it's this shaman and Kyle. Yeah, you are. Ah, yeah, we are missing the solution. Yeah, you are. Know so, uh, yeah, okay. So the form is incorporated, and something which would not be a direct object becomes a direct object. Yeah. Uh, in general, uh, in many languages, uh, there is a possess possessive semantics between the incorporated, the prior, let's say, prior direct object, the former direct object, and the new one. Yeah, and in Chukchi we actually find, we have seen this thing with body part incorporation, and we find some non-body part constructions, which many speakers tend to translate uh, with Russian possessive, with possessive semantics, like, again, this sharpened verb, uh, the father sharpened son's knife. Yeah, so we have the son in absolute, if it's in pronominally indexed, and we have a knife incorporated. Mm. Yeah, and if we want to provide a paraphrase for this, in a paraphrase, it would be something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, can anyone say why? That's, that's tricky, maybe, but let's try. Why the impossibility of 41 uh, makes this possessive? makes our translation and the paraphrase a bit inaccurate. Makes us not to state that not to state the rule that the new direct object is a possessor of the former. Yeah, yeah? Fede? Maybe it is in fact not a possessor but uh benefactor and in forty one post we have two benefactors and it's make a bit separate. Yeah, that's, I think, that's very right intuition. Yeah, so, uh, the more accurate is to state that simple ownership between the direct object, the new direct object and the incorporated participant is not sufficient enough uh, to, let's say, produce these constructions. And it's commonly found in other uh, External, external possession construction throughout the world. So the, the possession uh, the possession is linked to it, but in many cases uh, the, let's say, promoted participant is, uh, is somehow affected by the action itself. Yeah. Yeah, and you find it again with uh, 
the verbs which denote the uh, cause motion and yeah, cause motion in space. So uh, if you have a context that I, that me, Lasha, uh, took the uh, Oleg's book or no, uh, or notepad uh, to, to the Chukche speaker to study Chukche, uh, it cannot be. Uh, said in Chukche by 42. The only thing that 42 means, the, one of the things that 42 means, is that me, Lyosha, brought the book to, to Oleg. And, the, and who is the possessor? Yeah, and who is the possessor of the notebook? We are not very interested in it. Not, not pet. Book, okay. Yeah? Is this uh, uh, option to make a new uh, direct object uh, with incorporating the previous object uh, allowed only with verbs which behave as detransitive in European languages, or it is more common? Detransitive, you mean which have the verbs like give? Yeah. I, mean. um, I will. S I, yeah, the answer is no because yeah, we have sharpen in general. Sharpen do does not presuppose yet many other verbs like who can yeah we'll look at it in further a bit. Okay so the actually what can yeah so this incorporation promotion is quite a powerful device of Chukchu to uh, to give a direct object role to let's say the participants which semantics is not very frequently uh, Point to the direct object semantic role. Like you find uh, in 43, we find something like a container behaving as a direct object. In 44, we find this intended recipient or a kind of beneficiary. So, the, again, it's not an argument here, the father, which is an absolutive. Yeah, and uh, we also find. The source participant, uh, yeah, we, we, we see that sometimes source participant can be promoted to the direct object in 45. So the right hand and container derivation is a special thing in Chukchu to in Chukchu houses to drive all this, yet. Uh, and so yeah, here we take off the clothes from it. And yeah, if you look on, on the translation, you see that actually somehow, I wouldn't say it's pragmatic, but uh, somehow it's not a simple source. This sentence means that uh, this, uh, this, yeah, this rope for drying clothes is now free of clothes. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, in some events, we find the like sim similar semantic roles, a bit similar events, but uh, the the form indirect objects can become the new direct objects. The, the exact pattern is quite uh, difficult to state, but like if you compare this the six examples, something which was presented before, something which on this slide. What intuitions do we have? What uh, what is the semantics of this construction? What mm, mm, what makes it possible to for, for some participants to become new direct objects? Yeah. There should be a possession relationship mm. between the former direct object and the new one. Let's look at it in more detail. Uh, no. mm, it's very ro roughly possession. It's I would not say would not nay, maybe we can make it more. So so it's not uh, what is generally assumed by possession, but it's somehow linked. So any other guesses? Could this go back to? Mm -hmm. Ah, is it uh, relevant that we have uh, two 
I, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I forgot to ask you this. How do you think 46 and 47 are translated? They are grammatical sentences, but the semantics is different. For example, yeah. They would say that it's a strange sentence, which would mean that they put for the table, like the table is... Yeah? No, with, with this look we can't. It, it, it in general means not fill, but something put on the surface. Yeah, but, um, yeah, and 47, 46 is translated for the table, but 47 is translated on the daughter. So the, the beneficial interpretation is impossible here. Yeah? Uh, is it impossible even if uh, we have marked in our previous discourse that those clothes are belonging to the daughter? Uh, yes, because uh, yes, because we can have here this in a rope in a big case, and uh, it could not mean that the daughter's clothes are hang on some on some rope. So if we, even if we present a noun phrase which knows the rope with locative, it would be. Uh, it would be a not very tricky sentence. Yeah, okay, maybe to, to move further, uh, I, I give you this, I gave you these examples just to illustrate that actually no one of, we cannot say that the direct object is like beneficiary or, or an owner of an incorporated noun or a source or goal. It seems that again different classes of verbs uh, behave differently. I, it's not enough. The, the examples here are not enough to, uh, to to have a full picture. But I I, I would say you that uh, in general some verbs which do not presuppose any ch any change or any, yeah any change of allocation they. Uh, they can promote beneficiaries to direct object, and the verbs which do imply such such things resist it. And let's move further. Uh, yeah, the, like the summary is quite similar. We have different patterns. We need to study them in more detail. And if we come back again to our thing with Phil, it seems that the issue what is incorporated and uh, what can be a direct object in new construction is kind of, yeah, these two issues are not entirely separate. Again, with beneficiaries, it would be, in this case, you would need to state that, like the half of Chukchi verbs, have a beneficiary of the role. No, no, no. Uh, this dialogue should not uh, uh -huh. um, be the same for the same. Like for the same, mm, I think. Mm, I think. Here with hang, you have I mean, with take off, you have a uh, counter example. And actually, many give some give verbs in Chukchi promote the recipient to direct object. So, yeah, but let's move to other things. As I said, there would be no generalizations in this lecture, only questions. Okay, so back to. Singular participant incorporation. Yeah, it's just to remind you about what we're talking about. We've seen it in the beginning of the le of this lecture. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, if we like describe the general semantics of this uh, construction in Chukche, uh, we would say that this involves different kinds of possession of what is going to possession the uh, location, part of location uh, semantics. So in 52 we see that yeah. Uh, the hair belong is a body part of uh, Yannika, daughter of Oleg, and we see that yeah, uh, the hair it grows longer, but the actual subject is the daughter in absolutive, which uh, yeah, which is indexed and so on. In 53, we, uh, the it's not a body part, so yeah, it's the tale how the narrator uh, saved a Russian uh, water car driver because uh, yeah, he got lost during a snow snowstorm, and if his fuel, which is actually fat in Chukche, if it would finish, if it, if the driver would run out of fuel, uh, he would probably die. So we have the driver, this long word, called with crossing. Uh, yeah, in 53, in 53, and uh, it's the subject of the verb fat run out, run out of you. Mm. Yeah, again, about, yeah, again, example with the daughter, so, yeah, here, uh, yeah, the kin relation, the, the, the new, new subject and former subject can be in kin relations with each other, as in 54. Uh, and in 55, we see not strictly possessive semantics, but the semantics of so one building, one Yaranga, is a part of Chukchi camp. And a very bad thing happened to this Yaranga, it broke during the snowstorm. And the Yaranga, which, yeah, not Yaranga, but Yaranga, that's important. Yeah, and these Yerangas which were bro broken, they expressed, incorporated, and the whole camp is expressed as a subject. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Nidyalka from his studies, uh, they are in Russian, but if you can read Russian, I would definitely recommend you to, to read them. He, uh, he got this into it, this very right intuition here. Uh, that the uh, new, that this construction is possible when there is a, something like affected interpretation. So the new uh, subject is somehow affected by the action. But can we like find the what means for this construction? What means to be affected for this construction in Chukchi? So again, we have this our. This uh, yeah verbal verb plurality suffix, and we see that actually many it, it's more like a, an asterisk, not not question marks. Many uh, of our consultants suggest that uh, when there is a snowstorm and yaranga and only one yaranga breaks, it's not very natural to uh, to to use 57 to make the whole camp the subject. But when like a lot of Yerandas broke and it's a real disaster, it's quite normal and natural and fine to say 56. So yeah, we have, we have Yeranga which is built in RA, incorporated, and in 56 we have this distribu distributive suffix which signals that the Yerangas are plural and in 57, we do not have it. Yeah, but that's how it can look like. Yeah, uh, another thing which points us towards what effectiveness means. So, we can... Uh, 50, 58 is perfectly natural in Chukchi, so... Uh, if a one went wandering in the tundra, he can break, he can tear his boot. Yeah, he, his boots can be torn. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and you can say 58 about it. Express 
Ivan Ivan as a subject and boots as an incorporated nominal. Uh, however, can someone make a guess why uh, this context in in fifty nine is why you can't uh, incorporate boots uh, in fifty nine and express me as a subject. Well, it's not the case that the boot breaking happened to you. So, what are you doing in this verb? Yeah, so, and it actually points that effectiveness is a too vague term for this because. In general, yeah, when something happens to my property and I have no boots anymore, it's really bad for me. But the restrictions are more strict, so the restrictions need, uh, need, need to involve some kind of uh, the unity of place and time. So yeah, uh, the, the problem is that even if the boots are mine, if they don't break on me, on, on my on, on myself, then it's ungrammatical, and it's quite commonly found in other uh, personal possession constructions like with classes in other languages. Yeah, another issue about uh, the classes of verbs which allow this, which occur in this construction. So we have a general verb for fallen, chukche, eretic. Uh, and for some reason, uh, the Chukchi uh, sentence in 60 is translated as he lost his head, but not as the head, his head fell. So uh, you can wonder whether it's like a, just a pragmatic thing when we translate from Chukchi to Russian and so on. But let's look here. So. Uh, in the flats, Chukchi have come ports nowadays. If someone can find his head and ask other people, where is my head? They can answer him with 61A, where there is no known incorporation. Yeah, like, ah, your head fell from the cupboard. Like, look for it somewhere there. But they cannot translate it with B. So, like, you had, or oh, it's again, it's not cupboard, sorry, it's not cupboard here, but fell. So it's head fell, not head cupboard, sorry. Yeah, so they cannot translate it as you had fell from the cupboard. Maybe it's again about this thing of unity of place. Maybe it's, or maybe it's that, that the uh, simple motion of some of of some entity is not sufficient enough for for the incorporation instruction. So if something changes, something appears, something disappears, this construction can be used. But if not, we have this shift from fall to like fall and get lost. Yeah? Uh, is it symmetrical with problems of new object in incorporation? Or no. is it uh, to other two different situations? It's a bit unsymmetrical because like in the thing with, with object of incorporation and promotion we sometimes found the spatial yet um, movement um, move, like uh, movement and motion and mo motion relations within the things like it's normal to bring someone something and so or to put some or to, to like to power something somewhere so i think it's not the patterns which the patterns underlie the promotion to absolute which is intransitive subject and the patterns which underlie the promotion to uh, Absolutive, absolute, which is a transitive object, are a bit different at least. Yeah, and 
Another uh, acid repression, let's say, construction defined is about natural phenomenon. It's not strictly very much different from what we have observed with uh, the place and location thing with Yerandis and the camp. So, uh, some predicates in Chukchi which denote nature, like natural forces. Na yeah, some, some situations where a natural force uh, acts and so on, they can be that this uh, na part of the nature can be expressed as incorporated. The subject can either be uh, quite clear, so in 65 we just have, uh, uh, no, it's, sorry, we need to be here, excuse me. So in 62, in, no, in 63 we have this village uh, and the location where the rivers yeah, the village is the location where the rivers started to break out from the break out from the ice. Uh, yeah, but in '64 and '62, it's not clear what. It's kind of an, it looks like an impersonal construction. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a peculiar thing here is that actually this Claudius. The, the, the similar semantics can be expressed transitively. The difference is that, that when we have transitive sentences, when some natural object is involved, uh, at least this effect is not. The interpolation is a bit different. So in 65, it, this hurt is not a, a, a it's, it's not only a location where an event happens. Uh, 65 should mean that the, what happens to rivers that they start to run has, has some influence on the herd. So, for example, her, uh, some part of herd uh, st stayed on another bank of the or the another bank of the river, and so on. And it's similar is 66. So, uh, when it's just uh, the moon disappeared with an intransitive indexing. It kind of describes a natural phenomenon, and that's all it presupposes. But in 66, when it's transitive, the participant, which is an object, like the him or the ray, yeah, the participant, which is an object, should be influenced by this event. So, what happened to the moon made his life uh, more difficult or more easy. Yeah, and uh, at least with some of the sentences, what differs from the patterns we observed before is that actually we cannot, again, the glosses are, okay, so in 68, uh, there is no river gloss uh, in the verb. Yeah, you see, it's just here. No river. Okay, so that there is no, there should be no incorporation the glosses. I'm sorry, they are. Uh, broken, so yeah, we can't actually use this verb transitively with the river as a subject. Uh, yeah, a final question to you: What, since for those who were on the previous on the lecture yesterday and know something about Chukchi? Chukchi uh, indexing system, uh, indexing system. What's strange with seventy? Okay, we don't have much time, so here. So here we have the plural indexing of, sub of the subject. And it looks like that, it, it, so it's unclear what's the difference between plural A indexing here and singular. 
could be that actually the incorporated participant is indexed. But we have yeah we have examples like yeah 70 here with moon. So in general we have only one moon, yeah? But the indexing is also plural. And it, it's actually a puzzle for which I have no ideas. Maybe it's like the Chukchi spirits, or maybe it's something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, uh, just. W what is the plural of micro here? Uh, it's this na prefix, uh, and the, this combination of uh, uh, prefixes and suffixes is encountered in the part of the paradigm where a plural, a third, a third plural participant acts on second or third singular partic participant. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I read in, in below. Okay. Yeah, and thank you very much. this last point because at least, well, of course it's a very cultural specific matter, but I would actually, well, probably rain, snow, 
such things are less individuated, but the moon and the sun are, well, tend to be among the most individuated participants cross-linguistically, so it's uh, sort of a different story. Yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting, and yeah, in, in Chukchi culture, the sun and the moon also play some, yeah, of course, play some role, yeah, and actually the snow and the rain and so on can behave in exactly the same way. Rain, no, because it's expressed by another construction, but like the melting of the snow, it can behave like this, so it's, it seems that it's not about the individuation. The whole possibility is mainly about individuation, but not this peculiarity with uh, indexing markers. <laughs>